يا شبابا قد اناب والى الله استجاب يا حرفا تراقص في اختيالي وانشد زاهيا بين التلال لدار العلم يصدح في سبب الله جاي لما تست and he was smart enough to know that it's a test and he dealt with the test accordingly and he died and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah of course and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted him is something you should be envious of because what that reminded me of is the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whatever you live on the deen that you live on whatever you claim it to be Whatever you lived on, trust me, that's what you're going to die on. And don't you dare for a moment think that every person that gets cancer or every person that goes through a test like that, that it's a fault, you know, that يعني, it's a good thing for him. Sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes it's the opposite. You see, it happened to be good for him because he lived a life that was pleasing to Allah. He remembered Allah in good times, therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembered him in times of difficulty. Trust me, I believe that Allah didn't give it to him simply because, well, he's Muhammad Nagy and he happens to be special. No, he worked hard when things were good, when things were easy, when people usually forget Allah, when people usually don't have time for deen, when people usually don't have time for the masjid. He remembered Allah then, so therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembered him when he needed him the most. Allah there remembered him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stayed with him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed him to die bi idnillah successfully. Something that many of us think, yeah, brother, I'm Muslim, alhamdulillah, look at me, I'm leaving, I'm going, I'm coming. Of course I'm going to die on Tawheed. How do you know this? What proof do you have that you're going to die on this? Wallahi, I know people, Muslims, born Muslims, raised Muslims. I know people here in Sydney. Whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them cancer. And trust me, they didn't deal with it like how Muhammad dealt with it. And you know, I'm going to share some stories with you. And you might say, yeah man, wow, that's a bad Muslim. Is he really? Because honestly, we're living the same life. One guy gave me a call. He said to me, brother, there's a 54 year old Muslim. Never prayed in his life. Never prostrated once in his life. He said to me, brother, He's dying. Yani, we really think he's at his last stages. Please, this guy's a family friend. Yani, there's no one in the family, no one in the family that even prays. He said to me, please, man, do you think maybe you can go? Maybe you can say some words, whatever. I said to him, yeah, khalas, whatever. Tell the family that I'll be there tomorrow. He calls me up a few hours later. He said to me, brother, please make sure you don't go visit that brother, man. I said to him, why not? He goes, as soon as he heard that a religious guy is going to come visit him, he lost it, bro. He lost it. In fact, he ordered the hospital that no one is to visit me from now on except my immediate family. He died two days after that. Now, I'm not saying he died on kufr or he... No, no, no. Wallahi, well, whatever he died on, that's between him and Allah. But because you live that life, you die on that. You live that life, you die on that. And I want you to think about your life. Because tonight I'm not, you know, I'm not questioning your faith. I'm not questioning, do you love Allah? Habibi, we all talk the talk. Brother, I love Allah. I'll die for Allah. You know, I love the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'll die for his sunnah. Yep, 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 yep. Habibi, Allah doesn't look for lip service. Allah looks for action. You look at your life. Do you really love Allah? Do you really love Salah? Do you really love the masjid? How do you know? Look at your relationship with it. If you're lucky, if you're lucky, if you're a wali of Allah, if you're a gun, if you're an absolute gun, you come to Jumu'ah's prayer. And not just any Jumu'ah. Wallahi, I get frankness, brother. Can you tell me what time is the khutbah there? I'm like, yeah, brother. So the khutbah starts at 1.15. He says, no, 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 no. As in what time do you pray the salah for the khutbah? I said, brother, I'm telling you, the khutbah is at 1.15. Who cares when the prayer is? You need to be there at 1.15. Tell me, brother, I'm not interested in the khutbah. What time is the salah so I can double park, I come in, I pray my two I gotta go bro. You live on that deen, you die on that deen.
You see, every one of us here, and I'm sure, wallahi, I don't doubt, every one of us thinks, brother, I'm the best Muslim. Wallahi, I love Allah. I love the Quran. Well, do you really love the Quran? How much of it have you memorized? I'm 33. Uqsam Billah, I'm embarrassed to tell you how much Quran I've memorized. Wallahi, I'm embarrassed to tell you. Allah, come pull me aside, tell me, hey, Hubbus, you love the Quran? Astaghfirullah, bro, what are you saying? Well, I'll die for the Quran. Do you really, you spinner? Do you really? You still know the same five surah of Quran that you memorized when you were six years old. Allahu Alam, if you even read it properly. 30 years of life has passed you, and you haven't increased a single verse of Quran. And you want to come play the violin and tell me how much you love the Quran. Habibi, look, you're not standing in front of me, you're standing in front of Allah. But do you really? So don't think everyone that gets cancer, well, he deals with it nice. Brother, yeah, cancer is good. It gives you a time to repent. It gives you a chance. Yeah, I wish I get cancer. Allahu Akbar. Look how arrogant we are. Why is it that when you think cancer, why is it that when you think cancer, Everyone buckles. But didn't Allah tell you you can die at any moment? Some of us have more yaqeen in the words of a doctor. Some of us have more yaqeen in the words of an unbeliever with a suit and a tie and a little certificate on the back. Some of us have more yaqeen in his words than the words of your Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tell him, no, but astaghfirullah. Really? When you read the hadith and when you read the ayat of Quran that that can come to you at any moment, you don't panic. But when a doctor tells you, look brother, after looking at your tests, Allahu A'lam, we think you got about two weeks. <gasps> two weeks? Is that all I have? And you didn't react the same when Allah said you can die any moment. You didn't react the same. Every morning in the Sahih Hadith, what's the dua when you make up in the morning? I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen next week. Last night! What's a dua? Does any of the kids know the dua you make when you wake up? Anyone know? Alhamdulillah alladhi ahyana ba'dama You were dead last night! You were dead last night! You were dead! Didn't change you? So yeah, we're here for Muhammad Nagy because, yeah, but, but really you should be here for yourself. We should be questioning ourselves. That really, what din am I really living? Because that's the din you're going to buy on, trust me. And when Allah takes your soul, when Allah takes your soul, trust me, the condition of your din at that moment of death, if you were to live for another million years, you weren't going to move an inch from that condition. You know, sometimes you hear about a brother who died without salah. Wallah, he had intentions to pray. Wallah, brother, you know, he's the... Habibi, he died without salah. And, if, and trust me, if he died without salah, that means that when Allah took his life, he was never going to pray. He was never going to pray. The way you go, that's how you're going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the mashayikh, he actually mentions, he says that, that a family called him to come visit someone who's dying. An old man was on his deathbed. So the sheikh says, he says, I went, I went to the house. There's an old man. And they're asking me, look, can you come see our dad? He said, when I got there, he said, I parked my car. I got out of the car and the, and the house was blaring. Blaring, Um Kulthum, you know, this Egyptian singer. He said, they were blaring it. He said, I couldn't believe my ears. He said, at least, يعني, هلا, يعني, at least I'll pray, you know, play Quran, something. He said, I got to the house and they're blaring music and their father's dying. He said, so obviously they picked up and they were a bit uncomfortable, so they turned off the music and played some Quran. You know what happened? The father from the room is on his deathbed. He said, turn that stuff off and put her back on. She soothes my soul, man. The life you live, that's how you're going to die. Don't kid yourself. Don't look at others. But look at yourself. How many more messages do you have to hear? 
How many more funerals do you have to attend? I'm not doubting that we're Muslims. I'm not doubting. What quality, bro? What quality? What quality? Today your kid gets a little bit sick. Of course, you don't say it on your tongue, but deep down in your heart. By the way, do Allah do this to me for man? I pay my zakat. What? So you pay zakat, what? Yani, what? Allah owes you something? What, what, what? No, but I'm just saying, like, alhamdulillah, I pray. And, you know, I give money in charity, and this guy, he doesn't pray. And his kids, there's nothing wrong with them. And yani, your brother, why is Allah? Is that how you're going to stand in front of Allah with a heart like that? So please, my brothers, you know, Wallahi, we need to make a change. I'm jealous of this brother because he's one of the rare brothers that I was able to see. And again, of course, this is my opinion. I believe he died successfully. And for that, I'm jealous. For that, I'm not jealous. I'm actually dirty, bro. That's, that's, that's how jealous I am. Because I don't know what my fate is going to be. So please, my brothers and sisters, Wallahi, I really hope tonight can be a change in our lives. Enough. Enough. Wallahi, Wallahi, we've promised Allah again and again. Ramadan comes and Ramadan goes. Hajj comes and Hajj goes. And this person dies and this person goes. And this contract is finished. And we still keep giving Allah the same excuses and we haven't moved an inch. This needs to stop. We need to make a change. You need to better your life. Because the deen that you're on now, that's what you're dying on. How is your salah now? How? How is your salah? Allah says, successful are those believers. Successful are those believers whom in their salah they have, they have concentration. These people are successful. Habibi, I've been praying for over 10 years. I've been praying for over 10 years. And uqsam billah, I still to this day, in my salah, Habibi, I think about anything and everything except Allah. I'm quoting jobs, I'm crunching numbers, what's my wife making for food, I hope the boys don't leave without me, ta 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 ta, anything and everything except Allah. Say, so, yeah, brother, you can have a nice hectic bid and a hectic abaya, but Allah knows what's in the hearts. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us the best of Allah. <laughs> يرجو الثواب لا يبالي بالصعاب